Become the pupil with maths expert Wendy Fortescue Hubbard and see a simple way to start off with fractions. Fractions is one of the topics in mathematics that many people find very difficult. This is quite often because when they first started learning about fractions, they never really got the chance to rip up pieces of paper. Chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. Half, a half and a half. How can that be? I expect you were always taught that when you had a half, there had to be two identical sizes. Ah, but this is a half of a large bar of chocolate. This is a half of a medium sized bar of chocolate. And this is a half of a small sized bar of chocolate. When you're talking about fractions, you're talking about a part of a whole, which means that when we define our whole, our whole could be quite big or our whole could be quite small. Oh, this isn't the math lesson you want to do before lunch. Now, let's have a look and see how that works when we use paper. Here, I've got one whole piece of paper. That's my whole. I'm going to take that piece of paper and youngsters in class need to do this as well. And I'm going to divide it into exactly two. The two pieces need to match. And what I've got now is I've got one out of two pieces one out of two pieces. What I've got is I've got my one whole one and I've divided it into two equal pieces. My one whole one, I've divided it into two equal pieces. My two parts make a whole. There's my halves. Okay, let's take a different colour piece of paper. Let's see how that works this time. This time, I'm going to take my one hole and I'm going to divide it into three equal pieces and they need to be exact. Each piece has to be identical to the other. One. Two, three. Okay, can we name each of these pieces? How many pieces? One, two, three. I've got one out of three. I've got another out of three. And my last one out of three. One whole one divided into three equal pieces. A third. Three thirds make up one whole. So where can that take us? Let's have a look at what happens when we have more than three thirds. So we have one, two, three pieces, that's three thirds. Three thirds are one whole one and we can see that fits exactly on top. So what have we learnt so far? Well, we've discovered that you call a fraction by the number of pieces that you have divided that whole shape into. Here are some pieces, Blue Peter style, for us to look at. I'm going to spread them out to make one whole. Let's check that that is definitely one whole piece. One whole. So what is the name of these fractions? One, two, three, four, five. So the name is one chopped into five. 
It's one chopped into five. One divided by five. One divided by five. And one divided by five. One whole. What happens if we have more than five fifths? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I've got eleven fifths. Eleven fifths. In mathematics, when we have the top number being larger than the bottom number, we have a name for that and it's called a top heavy fraction. Another way of writing eleven fifths is to look at how many whole ones we have in this 11 fifths. So we need to have a look again at our whole pieces of paper. If you remember, for one whole number, we need to have five fifths. Five fifths makes one whole. There we go. One. And can I make another one? Let's see. Five fifths. Yes, I can make another one. So what I've got is one whole one, two whole ones. But I've got a fraction left over, one fifth. So here we've got two whole ones and one fifth. Two whole ones and one fifth. This, in mathematics, is called a mixed number. We have the whole part with the fractional part. So you can see that we can write 11 fifths as 2 and 1 fifth. Let's have a look at 3 and 2 fifths. Right, first of all, we need to have 1, 2, 3 whole ones three whole ones and we've got two fifths at the end. If you remember for one whole one we have five fifths. Which is going to be true for each of our whole numbers. So how many fifths have we got all together? We've got five fifths here, and we can write that down, plus another five fifths there, another five fifths there, and our two fifths. So all together we've got five, ten, 15, 16, 17 fifths. So 3 and 2 fifths is 17 fifths as a top heavy fraction. 3 and 2 fifths is 17 fifths as a top heavy fraction. So where has this initial journey into fractions taken us? First of all, it's helped us to understand, using the chocolate, how important it is to define how big our hole is to start with. Then we've looked at dividing a hole into equal sized pieces. And then how we can take the number of the pieces to make back into a number of holes. And through that journey, I think that we've learnt that the bigger the number at the bottom, then the smaller that part of the whole is. Clever, isn't it?